So we are now in the Kiwi Esplanade and the TBM is just under our feet. I'm uh, pretty excited because it's a big challenge and it will be three intense months from now on. So they are pretty excited, yes. For the first time in New Zealand, tunnelling under a major harbour is about to begin. It's part of an ambitious project to transport wastewater from central Auckland under the Manukau Harbour. Laura James went below ground to check it out. 35 metres below ground in Mangere is the entrance to a $1.2 billion tunnel being built to carry Auckland's wastewater. It's going to massively improve inner city waterways and harbour quality. Uh, too often we find that when it rains, uh, the combined system that's in the old part of Auckland overflows into the environment and creates problems. We're going to clean that up. This is Ground Zero. The tunnel boring machine began its 14.7 kilometre journey here in August last year. So far it's travelled 2.5 kilometres. Reaching here in Mangare Bridge, you wouldn't know it but it's below us, 15 metres underground, getting ready to make its way across the harbour, a journey that comes with some risk. Oh, the most obvious one is flood. While we're always facing water coming into the tunnel boring machine, it has been designed specifically for the water pressures that we'll face, but obviously we've got this big body of water above us. If you have a situation in, in land, you can easily, you can easily uh, work from the surface and do something. Under the sea, it's more complicated to make an intervention. Undersea tunnels are rare. This is the first to be bored under a major harbour in New Zealand. The most famous overseas example is the Channel Tunnel between the UK and France. This tunnel manager has plenty of experience. The first one was in, uh, in Hong Kong with an open machine, and then uh, the Sydney Harbour Crossing and now this, this one is the third one. The one and a half kilometre journey across the Monaco Harbour will take about three months. For us it's 16 metres a day every day. But first, tunnellers are carrying out final checks. It's a bit like getting your car ready for a long journey. So for us it's the cutter head. Are the cutting tools sharp? Are they in the right alignment? Are all the support systems ready? Because as you say, once we start driving we don't want to stop. Hoping to avoid any complications. Once we are in the next site, in the other side of the harbour, we all relax, we go for a break, Christmas break. With years of work still ahead to complete the whole project, the tunnel's not set to reach its Greyland finish line until 2026. Laura James, One News. Tamaki Makara is a city of bold contrast and natural charms. Just gorgeous. Bellissimo. Kapai. Just lovely. And we all want to keep it that way, right? Right. I'm Shane Kunis, the Executive Program Director for Central Interceptor, a giant wastewater tunnel that's been 10 years in the planning and will be six years in the making. It's to replace ageing infrastructure and will clean up our inner city waterways and our beaches. Our wastewater system is made up of pipes from your houses, which then flow into big pipes called interceptors. There's seven of those that go all around Auckland, with 70% of the waste coming into the Mangere Wastewater Treatment Plant every day. Now with our contractors, the Gala Abigaldi Joint Venture, we're building the Central Interceptor, a $1.2 billion tunnel. So why do we need the Central Interceptor? Like many cities around the world, in older suburbs, the stormwater and wastewater networks are combined. That means when it rains, the system is overflowed and tranquil streams like this become raging torrents. Once we build the central interceptor, there'll be almost no more overflows here. Water is life to all, a treasure that's passed down to the generations. Iba Iterangi, our tunnel boring machine, is digging the 5.5 meter diameter underground tunnel. There.
This is the front of the machine, and the cutter head will go attached here, and it's 5.5 meter diameter wide. We choose an air pressure balance type of tunnel boring machine. It means that the area in front of the cutter head is pressurized to keep groundwater out. She is also powered with thrust cylinders and travel up to 60 meters per day or more. Openings in the cutter head remove the soil into an excavation chamber. Then it travels through a conveyor and is dumped into max skips, which are lifted out of the shaft. Each ring is made up of six segments which are fixed together. The plastic liner protects the concrete from the corrosive effects of the wastewater. Tunnel gradient is 1 is to 1,000, and then wastewater will flow downhill, and then gravity will do the work. Electric locomotives take workers to the tunnel boring machine. The tunnel is now so long, it would take over half an hour to walk the first few kilometres. So it's good to get a ride. The trains are quieter, more sustainable, and best of all, there are no diesel fumes. But don't forget about the team that are building the two branch sewers, or as we like to call ourselves, the A-Team. Dominica is 12 metres long, and we use a technique called pipe jacking to build our tunnels. Hydraulic rams in the base of the shaft push her forwards. So as the hydraulic rams retract, we lay new pipes, just like this one, and then we keep pushing them up the tunnel. This is the cutting tool, which will be engaging with the ground, and uh, this will be ripping the ground slowly, and the material will be coming into the machine. You can see I'm 1.65 meters tall, and this is all we got. This is where the TBM pilot is going to spend most of his time. Dominica is smashing it, and we're ahead of schedule. How are huge team of world-class engineers and tunnelers are doing these highly complex works? And we're doing it six days per week to get the job done. Can you hear anything? No! Central Interceptor Project's a chance to be bold and try something new, like this, a pilot scheme to treat and reuse processed wastewater for construction activities. But a Central Interceptor isn't just about building a tunnel. They're also leaving behind a social legacy, like helping us at Tiahiwaru start a commercial laundromat. Or helping workers with literacy and creating scholarships for our rangatahi. And we're planting thousands of trees to help regenerate waterways. The Central Interceptor is the largest wastewater infrastructure project in New Zealand's history. It is also an enabler, replacing a section of the ageing Western Interceptor under the Manukau Harbour. It will also allow for future projects to take place to cater for growth and resilience. The Central Interceptor is pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into the local economy and it will leave a cleaner city for us all and for the future generations to come. And my child. And my family. Dogs are family, right? And for all of us to benefit from for the next hundred years. <laughs> <laughs>